Time now for Campaign Beat. Shaul Pelgrin is with us. Charles Pellegrin, but also our uh, France 24 politics editor, uh, Mark Perman. Ch Charles, uh, th again, the, the issue of uh, this attack Thursday, how it's going to weigh on the final 24 hours of campaigning, well, we've already seen it. Well, uh, the killing of a police officer on Thursday night and terrorist attacks in general, they're the fuel of far-right candidate Marine Le Pen's ideology. She's already criticized the government before for what she called its leniency with regards to terrorist threats. And this Friday, she made a call to restore France's borders and leave the Schengen area. Let's take a listen. I solemnly ask that we take back control of the borders that were given away with the Schengen Treaty and for there to be immediate penal processing of people with S-files. That is to say, all individuals on our soil who are known to align with the enemy's ideology. Straight away, it is necessary to implement the expulsion of people holding S-files, to accelerate the procedure of taking away the French nationality of dual nationals with S-files, and to expel them immediately to their country of origin. So the polls will be open in less than two days now. Marine Le Pen has always said she has the toughest stance on this particular issue. Uh, Mark Perelman, where, is the attack going to end up benefiting Marine Le Pen uh, in this uh, first round of the election? Well, that's the million-dollar uh, question. Obviously, it's already a very tight and uncertain race and a very unpredictable uh, campaign. Will this change uh, the balance? Uh, will the last polls are taken uh, today, one that was taken partly before the attack and partly after, uh, shows not a lot of change, uh, with Emmanuel Macron, the centrist candidate, still in the lead, followed by Marine Le Pen, who gained a little bit, and then François Fillon and Jean-Luc uh, Mélenchon. So uh, it, re it really remains to be seen whether that will indeed change. We know the terrorist context has been there. Obviously, what happened yesterday night uh, was tragic and is bringing the security issue back to the fore. It could also uh, benefit in some way uh, François Fillon, because he's uh, said that he wants really to fight uh, Islamist terrorism. He even wrote a book uh, uh, about it. And also the fact, as we just heard from the Paris prosecutor, uh, that maybe uh, the uh, suspect, or now uh, actually the killer, uh, was not properly monitored, that maybe he was released too early in jail. And François Fillon will probably use this to say, we need tougher law and order, and this is what the Conservative Party is about. All right. And we've seen, uh, Charles Pagan, I want to ask you about this, because we've seen uh, some of the candidates suspending their rallies and others not. Uh, Ma Emmanuel Macron, the frontrunner, uh, Mark mentioned, he, uh, he suspended his. Uh, absolutely. Uh, he, he actually addressed uh, the French public today. He, he made no mention of France's bo borders uh, as he is a pro-European centrist candidate. And his emphasis after the attack was more on making sure that the French uh, people stay united. Uh, he is nonetheless calling for 10,000 people, more police officers, and to reform and centralize the French intelligence uh, services. So in an address uh, to the public this, this Friday, the 39-year-old, uh, who could be France's youngest president, attempted to explain that his young age would not be a problem. Let's take a listen. The will of the terrorists is to destabilize the country. And the most fundamental way is the French are prepared to decide their future. It is democracy that is targeted, our cohesion that they want to shake, our values to which it is intended to carry a decisive blow. Under these circumstances, the prime role of the French president as the commander-in-chief, the guarantor of the institutions, is to protect the French people. I'm ready. Well, Mark, simple question. Is the former economy minister actually ready for this challenge? Well, we'll know Sunday. Clearly, uh, this uh, is considered as his weakness. He's a former banker, yes, so he's good on the economy. He's maybe good on social issues, on youth. But when it comes to terrorism, when it comes to fighting terrorism, to fight wars, this is what a president of the republic is supposed to be about. So does he have what it takes, uh, really, to make tough decisions? This is why he wanted to say, OK, I'm young, I'm not that experienced, but I know what to do, I have a plan, trust me. And this, uh, this credibility issue is uh, going to be crucial uh, for him. He already had it, but with the terrorist attacks, this is clearly a major question mark for him until Sunday.
All right. Let's move forward to uh, François Fillon, now the Les Républicains candidate, pledged to keep the, com the country under a state of emergency. Following the shooting, he explained that security will have to be a, quote, priority for the next president, promising to boost police and military forces. Another way that he wants to fight terrorism is through diplomacy. Let's take a listen. From Washington to Moscow, I will lead diplomatic efforts to create an international coalition against Islamic terrorism. I will increase security at our borders and renegotiate the Schengen Treaty so that border controls will be maintained beyond the month of November 2017. So François Fillon calling for a renegotiation of the Schengen zone to get more control of its borders, a proposal close to that of Marine Le Pen. So my question, Mark, is how different is François Fillon's uh, program compared to that of Marine Le Pen? How will he stand out? Well, uh, clearly, uh, there are some similarities. Uh, obviously, Marine Le Pen uh, wants, you know, to ban all kind of immigration. That's not in the program of François Fillon, who wants to have yearly quotas. Uh, he doesn't want to close the borders, but obviously he's calling for more uh, control, and uh, he knows uh, that the mood is decidedly uh, towards the right and towards the far right. So what he has to do, and what he's hoping, is to capture uh, the, those fears and saying, you know, I'm the one who has experience. Marine Le Pen is talking, but she n was never in power. I was prime minister for five years. I know how this works. Please Trust me. So yes, he's hoping, especially that uh, the the uh, voters who are over 60, they are the ones who go to vote uh, the most, are going to come in droves on Sunday and maybe push him into the second round. And there he thinks he really has a shot, despite all the problems he's had. I were mentioning how uh, most, but not all, of the major contenders are uh, suspending rallies this Friday. Yeah, the leader of La France Insoumise, or France Unbowed, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the far-left leader, has called on his, head, on his fellow candidates to keep a cool head after this attack and not to blame the government for the current situation. He's not changed his campaign plans. He'll be joining his uh, supporters in the uh, Parisian neighborhood of Minimontant in about an hour. Our reporter Chris Moore is already there, ready to see the speech from the far left leader. Chris, can you tell us more about how Mélenchon has dealt with this attack? His reaction to yesterday's events uh, actually very similar to what he said in the wake of those arrests in Marseille you were talking about a couple of days, namely that the, the way for the terrorists is to win is if, if we give up. He says it's absolutely essential uh, that we carry on uh, living uh, our daily lives. Obviously, he says uh, resources need to be given to the police uh, and the uh, security services. So living his daily life or his daily life for someone running for the presidency, at least Jean-Luc Mélenchon is due here uh, in the uh, next hour or so in the east of Paris for a uh, pre-dinner drink, which he's, uh, which he's called people to take part in uh, nationwide in support of his La France uh, and Soumise uh, movement. Jean-Luc Mélenchon due to be speaking here and his special guest is set to be uh, the uh, Podemos uh, le leader. Uh, a real sign there of the European element of uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, but that's something which people have been waking up to uh, outside France's borders as he's uh, surged in, into the uh, place of a real contender in this presidential race. Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, wants to renegotiate European treaties, which he says are, are not working, not just for France, but for a whole of uh, particularly uh, southern European uh, uh, countries. And perhaps uh, Podemos' presence here, a symbol of the, the direction he wants to take France uh, and Europe in. Chris Moore reporting there from Mini Montan in Paris. All right, many thanks, uh, Charles Pellegrin. Uh, before we go and before we say goodbye to Mark Perlman, who will be uh, co-hosting our election night coverage uh, on Sunday, uh, Mark was mentioning the polls again. They're very tight, and it is still very much a four-way race. Yeah, let's take out one of the polls done today on a sample size of 750 people just after the attack in Paris last night. Uh, Emmanuel Macron is in the lead with 23% uh, of uh, vote intentions, trailed by Marine Le Pen with 22%. The one progressing today is François Fillon, who is third with 21% of voting intentions, so very close to the top two and a potential place in the second round of the election. Mélenchon drops to 18%.